Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. I'm Rebecca Keppel. Today's video is another episode of new and must have crafty supplies. This time I have a really fun mix of both stamps, dyes, mediums, and papers. If you enjoy seeing new product reviews, be sure to subscribe to my channel and hit that like button so that I know. Today's video is going to include the latest color of Distress Oxide ink, a newer color of Tonic Studios Nouveau Crystal Jewel Drops, some new Lucy's Cards Little Things sequins, some really cute dyes for the holidays from Simon Says Stamp and CZ Designs, some shimmering cardstock from Memory Box, and some new stamps and dyes from Paper Tray Ink. So let's jump right in and take a look at these fun new products. This is the Memory Box Shimmering Cardstock Holiday Glitter Pad. There are 24 six by six sheets and two of each of the 12 glitter colors. You can see how thick the cardstock is here. This is not like their foil paper pad, which I've talked about before in other videos that I love. This cardstock is actually extra thick, but you'll see later in the video that it still die cuts beautifully. You can also see that I'm handling and flipping through the papers and it does not appear that the glitter is shedding, which is super important to me because I don't want a bunch of glitter to fall out on my friend or family member's lap when they open a card from me. I also really can't get over how gorgeous these colors are and how much shine the glitter has. Next up, to show you the new Tonic Studios Jewel Drop color, I wanted to compare it to the two colors I already owned that seemed similar. The first one is Rose Water. The next is Strawberry Coulee. I love how these dry both translucent and dimensional, so I decided to try the newest peach color. The new color is probably closest to Rose Water, but if you look closely, you can see the Rose Water has a definitive pink hue to it, while peach is definitely more, well, it's peach. So I did set this paper aside to dry so you could see the translucence of these drops once they're dried. Next up is the new Distress Oxide color, which is called Rustic Wilderness. I'm going to compare the new color to several others in the Distress Oxide line, starting with Mode Lawn. I'll show the difference between the colors stamped out and then blended as well. So I have Mode Lawn, Lucky Clover, and pine needles, which I thought were the greens closest to rustic wilderness. But as soon as I stamped it, I could see how rich and dark this green is and how it's really nothing like any of the others. For the blending, I'll start with the newest color and blend my way upwards to the lightest mowed lawn, which actually looks like it kind of needs a refill. If the stamping was stunning and different, the blending was absolutely amazing. I love how blending out this new color from more ink to less ink really gives a beautiful green gradient all on its own. I'm very happy to have added this color to my Distress Oxide collection. Next up are the dies from Simon Says Stamp and CZ Design. This is Chunky Mary and has a shadow die plus the outline die and cuts the inner letters too. The chunky trees and holly are similar. There's a shadow die for the trees and one for the holly too. They also cut out an outline and some interior designs as well, making them the perfect candidates for die cut inlay. This is the sequin and gem mix from Lucy's Cards Little Things Snowy Skies mix. I love the frosty mix of white iridescent and light blue, plus the mix of shapes and textures too. Last is the Paper Tray Ink Holiday Door Decor Stamp Set from their Ink to Paper collection and the Coordinating Holiday Door Decor Dies. I love how the stamp set comes in this little magnetically closed pouch and the stamps and dies give so many options for decorating a front door scene. Now let's jump into some card making. I'm going to show how to mix and match some of these new products to create three fun cards. I started off by cutting out three of the tree shadow dies from Chunky Trees and Holly Die out of Nina Solar White cardstock and ink blending with the new Rustic Wilderness Distress Oxide ink on top of them. I tore off one of the green glitter cardstock from the memory box pad. You'll notice when I tear it, I had a little trouble getting it off the pad. It's okay, it only tore at the back a little bit, so it wasn't a problem. And I cut out three outline trees from that. I used Thermoweb's Ultra Bond Liquid Glue to adhere the glittery green outlines to the ink blended green shadow die cuts. 
Then I cut the trees out from a silver and kind of a champagne type gold from the same pad and used a basic die cut inlay technique to fill in each of the open spots of the trees alternating between the two metallic colors. Really, really easy to do, but has such a really great glittery, colorful impact. Then I put some liquid glue on an A2 piece of glitter cardstock that I had already used for die cutting and matted a four by five and a quarter piece of white cardstock on top so as not to waste any of that glitter paper. The Chunky Mary fits best horizontally on an A2 card. So I lined up the three trees at the bottom and then adhered the green glitter shadow layer with tape runner on top. I used liquid glue to adhere the Outline Mary in white cardstock on the green shadow layer. It's a lot easier to use liquid glue when you're adhering to the glitter paper. And then used the same die cut inlay with the same silver and gold cardstocks to put the letters inside the outline. Liquid glue is really just the best here because the tape runner has a bit of trouble sticking to that glitter. I did decide to go ahead and adhere the inner pieces of white cardstock to the R's, the bumps at the top of the R's, because I felt like it looked more completed that way. Then I added tiny dots of glue to the trees and placed some of the teeny tiny little stars from the sequin mix on top. There's already so much shine on that glitter paper that this step is not necessary, but I love the way the little stars glinted in the light. Last but not least, I did add some of the white sequins from the mix to the card as snowy accents. This card was quickly and easily created and packed with tons of shimmer and shine. To create the door scene, I stamped and die cut out all the accessories that I wanted to use first. As you can see, the wreath die is a closed die, making it hard to line up over a stamped image. So I die cut that wreath first, then replaced the die cut inside the A2 white cardstock panel I had cut it out of. Then I lined up the stamp on top of the die cut and closed the misty door to pick up the stamp. This allows me to stamp it in the exact right place. I stamped the wreath with Rustic Wilderness Distress Oxide ink. It's honestly the perfect color for wreaths. I stamped a bow for the wreath in Festive Berries Distress Oxide ink. There's even a second layer for the bow that stamps some details and lines that make the bow look so realistic. I stamped the second layer in white pigment ink. I decided to die cut a red door and then stamped the door details in the same white pigment ink. They even have little stamps that can be used to look like small drifts of snow forming in the corners of the door. So once again, I stamped those in that same white pigment ink. Double and triple stamping helped those show up against that dark red background. There's a sweet sentiment in the stamp set as well, so I cut a craft panel down to four by five and a quarter and placed the door frame in there just so that I could get an idea of where the sentiment should go and then stamped that sentiment in black ink. I flipped my craft panel over and added liquid glue to the back so that I could glue it on an A2 glitter panel from that memory box pad. I then used tape runner to adhere the door and the door frame and the wreath and the wreath bow. I went back to the liquid glue and my Studio Katya embellishment wand to adhere the snowflake sequins and some small white sequins as snowy accents. In the photo, you can see that I also added that little die cut door handle. I really loved all the realistic details in this set and there were tons more that I didn't even get to use for this card. For this last card, I'm going to create a glittery stained glass effect with the Tonic Studios Nouveau Jewel Drops and Memory Box Glitter Pad. I started by adhering the Chunky Merry Shadow and the Chunky Holly Shadow layer to the cardstock. I'm using a Gina K Peach Bellini matted onto Key Lime for a fresh non-traditional color combo. 
I cut the outline letters of the same white glitter cardstock from the memory box glitter pad and adhered that down to the shadow layer with liquid glue, remembering to add the center parts of those R's as well. Then I took the peach jewel drops and filled in those letter open areas. This was really easy to do since the outlines created little walls to keep the jewel drops in. Since the cardstock is so thick, the jewel drops stay confined to inside those letters very easily. I love these jewel drops because they are affordable enough to collect a whole bunch of colors and I like how they flow so easily from the nozzle. I think they're even easier to work with than the traditional Tonic Studios crystal drops. Next, I adhered the outline layer of the holly with liquid glue again, both cut in the white glitter card stock, and then I filled in the holly berries with the peach jewel drops and then grabbed an older color that I had, which was key lime for the holly leaves. Even though this is one of my older colors of jewel drops I've had for a long time, it still flows really smoothly. This is another reason why I don't mind spending money on these. Once again, I used my embellishment wand and liquid glue to adhere a few of the white and iridescent sequins from the mix to accent the card. But the real star of the show is the glitter and jewel drop stained glass effect on the die cuts, especially once it dries nice and translucent. Which of these new supplies struck your eye? I love hearing about which is your favorite down in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe to my YouTube channel, and hit that bell so you can be notified every time I have a new video available. As always, I want to thank you so much for spending time with me today. Please stay safe, stay healthy, and I'll see you again soon. Hopefully, do it once. That's like never happened, so I don't even know why I'm bothering to say it. I'm going to share how to mix and max, mix and max. Hmm. <laughs>